How did you get over the fear of being naked in front of someone for the very first time? As a never nude, I've always been scared of being naked in front of someone until I lost my virginity. He was naked too, and got naked before I did. So it didn't feel too scary. To this day, I can only get butt-ass naked if I'm in a private room alone with a sexy naked man. Even when I'm changing in the locker room at the gym. I go hide somewhere or have a towel covering me up. I do have my, woman, doctor check my breasts annually for tumors. But I feel somewhat less shy with showing my boobs. At the beach, I'd wear a string bikini top with swim shorts completely covering my cheeks. I don't know how all men are but my partner just worshipped my body and undressed me himself at his own pace and that for me was awesome. Because his eyes were drinking everything they lay on. After the sex he cuddled and start giving me compliments and for me that was amazing because he was my fist. But he was very experienced and had seen a lot. So for him to still be so amazed by my body it was wow. Greatest compliment. Also I had many surgeries and had to be naked in front of a lot of people. So at this point I don't really care. Just. Accept it. Men don't need much. It's mostly in our own heads. If it's before having sex or just having fun with someone. I'll let them take my clothes off. The other person is already attracted to you and seeing you naked is what they want. Once the clothes are off the pressure is off because they see you and they are more than likely naked too. Also, look at yourself in the mirror. The more you do it the more you will like your body and feel more confident. Some day are easier than others. I've had four kids and I'm married. My body has changed and I still feel self-conscious around my husband. But he loves my body. I hope this helps. We may have all the pockets. But male fashion isn't perfect. Which common features of male clothing rile you? I prefer to wear vests when wearing suits. But there are essentially two colorations that I can choose from if I want it for a reasonable price, while black or dark gray slash blue. As for the rest of the suit, the name of the game is black, gray, or navy blue. I can only mix around with shirts and ties so much. At some point I might very well want to roll in a sanguine color or some other variation on blue. At the very least for a price that doesn't starve me for the coming month. Something as small as a gray vest with a gold colored back would be a major variation. But there are none. Where in the heel are all these tiny men that clothing stores order for? I'll go into a store looking for some jeans. And there will be 20 pair of size 30 waist. And nothing bigger than a 36. Where are these guys? I only know one guy who fits that size. Further to that. When and why did a size 38 waist stop being 38 inches? I can try on 5 different 38 pants from 5 different manufacturers. And none of them are the same. Why? Edit. Spelling and grammar. Socks being a ridiculous and untrue one size fits all in quad. I'm 6 168 pounds wear a 9. 5 to 10 in shoes and just about every pair of socks I've ever owned has the heel halfway up the back of my ankle. It looks ridiculous and bunches up over the back of dress shoes. Bonus round. Jeans either being skinny and are essentially leggings. Or being slim and are essentially bell bottoms. How hard is it to make a nice pair of fitted jeans without giant breezy leg holes? The tapered leg slim stuff is basically it. But impossible to find and many of them aren't actually tapered at all. Day laugh occasionally while crying? I do but only when I'm wondering why I'm crying. Do you want to laugh? Or are you being forced to laugh helplessly? Yes sometimes. But that's because something is so depressing or upsetting that it's unbelievable and therefore laughable. Makes me feel crazy so I try to not do it all the time. Why is Israel currently allowed to compete in international sporting events when South Africa was banned from them during its apartheid years? Because Israel as a country doesn't intentionally attack anybody who isn't part of a terrorist group, which any country has the right to defend itself. People refuse to accept that it's an apartheid state. For some reason, they get a pass on committing atrocities against specific ethnic and religious people. Funny that. Israel is a democratic nation whose population is 25% Arab. The occupied territories have been administered by Egypt semicolon Jordan. By Israel. And autonomously by themselves. Nothing has worked because the Palestinians hate the Israelis more than they want to build a successful two-state solution. Not shooting indiscriminate rockets at civilians is a prerequisite to not being treated as a hostile rouge state. Palestine can't seem to help itself. Comparing Israel to South Africa is nonsense. Up. The biggest mistake in the Israeli conflict is that the UK had to relinquish British Palestine. If Palestine was UK controlled at the point of creation of a Jewish state, I suspect that a peaceful solution would have been found by now, may with us Brits being painted as the bad guys. Kind of like the nations of former British India. Israel is a legally constituted member of the U. N protecting its historic borders from outsiders. South Africa was an equally legal state, but had its new population suppressing its historic population by force. That are not even remotely the same. Israel's land claims predate the existence of the Palestinian claimants by centuries. That is simple historic fact. Are they arrogant bastards that deserve a smackdown? Absolutely. But that's really hard to do when would-be conquerors are raining rockets on their heads every day. What music artist's death hurt the most? Chester Bennington. So much of his slash Lincoln Park's music was either about hanging on reaching out for help, or giving up, in the end hits quite differently these days. If you see footage of Freddie Mercury withering away to HIV AIDS it is heartbreaking. 
especially knowing that the sciences were moments away from being able to save him or at least significantly extend his health for years if not decades to come. Whitney Houston, I used to listen to her songs as a sad, lonely, little girl and think about how happy and fun and bright being 20-something would be. Then she died before I was old enough to be able to hear her voice in person and it felt like I missed seeing a relative right before they passed. Scott Hutchison, Frightened Rabbit, I felt like this guy was crying for help and his death could have been prevented. Jeff Buckley, so much potential. What would he have done with another 10 to 15 years of an active career? Also Amy Winehouse, she got so much attention for her vices. But she really was amazing, her talent was overlooked. Christine McVie's death a couple months ago really got to me. I feel like she got a bit overshadowed by Stevie Nicks. And that's a damn shame. Songbird https colon slash slash u2 b slash y9 hqn 8 by 6 a 8 s is an absolutely brilliant song. I struggle to describe why. But something about it just hits me deep in my soul in a way music rarely does. Prince. I went to Minneapolis a couple of weeks after he died and spent a bunch of time walking around Paisley Park. Contemplating how significant his music had been during different points in my life. I figured my family would have thought I was crazy for doing that but found out my brother did the same thing a week before. He also didn't tell anybody for the same reason. LOL.